Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. everyone and welcome to the show. This week we'll be hearing from the Lancashire GAA who are planning a major pitch development at Broughton Park in Manchester. Dominic Kerwin and Marion Warden have formed a duet to sing a lovely song called Two Story House. But first we're off to an Irish pantomime at the Liverpool Irish Centre. This is a sellout crowd for a great night's fun. So the Liverpool Irish Centre pantomime this year, 2022, was our 10th pantomime. And this year we chose Snow White and we set it in Limerick. So the full title of the pantomime was Snow White and the Little People of Limerick. So it's the traditional pantomime tale with a wicked stepmother and Snow White going into the woods and coming across the little people. And the little people look after Snow White and she looks after them and everything's going great. But then this wicked stepmother finds out that she's not the most beautiful woman in Limerick, let alone Ireland. Whatever you may do, Snow White will always be most fair. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! 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 yeah. 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 Buzz yeah. off at your brain! And she sets out to kill Snow White, which she does in a rather complicated and unsatisfactory fashion. Yeah. <laughs> and then the wicked stepmother is back to being the most beautiful woman in Ireland. But fortunately, everything works out well in the end because when they're all gathered for Snow White's wake, somebody bumps into her and the apple is dislodged. She's dead! She's alive! <laughs> and Snow White comes back to life and we have a great party at the end. When you're as evil, and as nasty as you are, you will always be ugly. I'm the inside. No! 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 Snow White lives happily ever after with the prince. The prince has been walking all over Ireland with his, his own mammy looking for the most beautiful woman in Ireland. And right at the end, just in the nick of time, he finds her at the Bally St. Michael pantomime, Liverpool Irish Centre, 2022. Thank you very much. Well, I'm looking for, you know, like any Irish mother, I'd want the best for me up in my lad, you know what I mean? I'd want the best for him and hope he can find that. But he's not too pleased with the ones I'm picking for him. He's too fussy for his own good. I've introduced him to some of the beauty, most beautiful women, but they're not good enough. Well, you don't have to be rich to be my girl. You don't have to be cool to rule my world. When you're the handsome prince, you can't just marry anyone. You have to marry the most beautiful girl in the world, don't you? I do. So what have you got in mind? Don't know, someone with a bit of class, bit of beauty, don't know. Anybody really. 
Snow White, what's it like to be the most beautiful girl in Ireland? It's a bit overwhelming to be honest. Um, yeah, but it's, it's so lovely and you know, it's very special to everyone and to me. I've got my eyes set on a handsome prince. But do you know that your life is in danger? No evil can happen in Limerick. But my dear, I insist. It won't kill you. You're very jealous, aren't you, of Snow White? Coming in here thinking anyone's going to be looking at her when there's double egg and chips on the menu. Oh, yeah! I just want the best for my daughter. And, you know, I, I, th I, I think that my, my wife looks after my daughter. She takes her you know, under her wing and shows her things, you know. One nil to me! <laughs> I absolutely love her. She's brilliant, she's great, she's a lovely girl. Now, Mirror, why do you keep telling us lies? Because you keep telling us that this lady over here is the most beautiful lady in Ireland. I can only tell the truth. But what about Snow White? Well, there's so what Snow White is. She's the most fairest in the land. But, you know, changes as time moves on. Terrible news I've got, terrible news. <laughs> Morbid Maud really looks after Snow White tries to help her, give her guidance, but she just never listens, never. She's away with the fairies and the animals. Now, handsome prince, you found the most beautiful girl in Ireland. I did, and she was only behind the curtain, so I don't know where I've been looking all my life. I am very happy at the minute, but I'm a bit sad at the same time because of the past he's had. I haven't put up with the woman he had before, and I will be trying now to make up for that difference. Show him what a proper Irish mother is. I'll give him some proper Irish love. And what about you, Snow White? Are you happy with your friend? Yeah, of course. He seems like he's up for a laugh. Well, I think you've all been up for a laugh tonight, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, it's honestly one of the best experiences of my entire life. <laughs> what a very enjoyable pantomime. And congratulations to everyone who took part. You were all fantastic. Now the Lancashire GA County Board are planning a major pitch development at Broughton Park in Manchester. And we went along to meet them recently for an update and to see how plans are shaping up. The last couple of months we've been very, very busy. Um, we've had a series of meetings with the council with regards to planning applications and um, just making sure that uh, progress is, is, is happening behind the scenes. We've had a series of meetings uh, with Crow Park uh, in terms of funding, making sure that that side of things is coming and we've generally got uh, good commitment now in terms of this development and a lot of backing in Crow Park and obviously with the local council. The proposal is we build two pitches here. One pitch is dedicated as our uh, county pitch, so uh, we would host our inter-county games for uh, hurling and football uh, on that pitch. The second pitch then would be set aside as a club pitch and we've got three if not four clubs that would be looking at uh, using those pitches and then with the lease agreement with Broughton Park uh, we'd also have access to two or three of the other existing pitches that are floodlit so if the teams wanted to come down for training sessions we'd ideally want them to train on those sessions and then save the pitches for, for match days. Stan, of course it's been a great year for Full and Gaze. Tell me a little bit about where you're up to at the moment. Yeah, that a fantastic year, Martin. Um, the Camogie girls won the Senior League, the Intermediate League, and they're going over to play in the All-Ireland Semi-Final on the 19th of Feb. And the Hurlers won the County Championship, the British Provincial Championship, beat Keown Craig in the All-Ireland Quarter-Final in Birmingham and we played last weekend in Port Leash and unfortunately we were beaten by the Munster champions Bally Giblin but it was a great year all, year, all told. Um, Liam and Liam Knocker and Owen Kelly have done a great job with, with the lads and all credit to them for keeping things going. You know it's vital that we have a facility here in Manchester that we can play our home matches on and call home so that we can then develop the underage games that we want to develop in Camogie and Hurling. Hearing today for, um, about what their current situation is and the fact that the clubs are kind of spread out all over the city and don't have decent changing facilities for the game to really develop and for it to become part of the community uh, you need good changing facilities you need good pitches you need all weather pitches with flood lighting and to see that come about here in a central location in Manchester would be fantastic. I think it would be great for the game. It would be great to attract young people and children into the game as well because if you want sustainability and development you have to be getting them from, from childhood. So it would be a really, really good thing. 
Uh, the Northern Games are scheduled for the 13th, 14th of May uh, here at Broughton Park. Um, we're inviting uh, clubs from uh, Scotland, Yorkshire, uh, naturally the clubs here from Lancashire and uh, clubs from East Midlands. Um, coming out of Covid now, it's a great opportunity just, just to get out and just play a bit of ball. Um, hoping to have the schools uh, playing here on the Friday. So we're going to make it a, a big community event here in Lancashire. We're looking at uh, under 7s, 9s, 11s, 13s and up to under 15s. Uh, it's not just football, we're hoping to have uh, maybe an exhibition of uh, underage hurling as well. It is for boys and girls, it's, uh, it's for everyone, it's a big, big community event. Um, uh, if we're also looking for volunteers for the day uh, to help out just even with the little things with um, uh, car parking, uh, marking the pitches. So as many volunteers we can come down, it'd be fantastic. Broughton Park shares the same site as um, many of the teams here in Lancashire, St Peter's and, and Fulling Gales. And indeed, when I came here in 1991 to join Broughton Park, I also played Gaelic football down here with, uh, with St Peter's. So I guess the relationship's always been there. The rugby club has always had a big Irish contingent within it. A lot of university students that would have come over over the years like myself. And... Um, more, more recently then we've, we, we've come to the realisation that perhaps there's great synergies between the two clubs in terms of sharing our facilities and optimising what we can do for the local community. I think for us it means that we actually get more people from our local community identifying what's down here on the site. Rugby tends to be a winter sport whereas the Gaelic games tend to be much more a summer related sport so it means we can get better use of our facilities all year round, 12 months of the year. It means we can put more investment into the development of our pitches, management of our pitches and also means the clubhouse itself can be, can be used in a more multifunctional way. But if you think about it as well Martin, you know the county team are off on Sunday to play our home match in the National Hurling League against Leitrim in Abbottstown. I mean, that, that's just, it's hard to comprehend that that's happening in 2020, 22. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's insane, you know, to put 25 lads on a plane on Sunday morning, land in Dublin, go to a pitch, get changed, play a match, get changed, come back over that night. I mean, that's just an unreasonable ask for any amateur sportsman never mind someone never mind the lads who have been playing this game all of their lives you know it's it's not right and we have to fix it in the next couple of months we should uh, start seeing some progress um, our planning application will be due in imminently we have another meeting at the end of february in and around ga congress with uh, some of the um, ex executive committee in in croke park for funding and uh, infrastructure um, so yeah in the next couple of months uh, we should we should be in a position really to start putting a program of works together uh, and then hopefully start turning turn us on and see how we go. We want to be able to have it become enmeshed, enmeshed in the community here so that whether people are Irish or Irish heritage or have no link to Ireland that they're able to play the games and enjoy them because they are fantastic games, uh, some of the best in the world. It's great to see the Lancashire GA County Board planning ahead to keep Gaelic games alive in Manchester and we wish them the very best of luck. Now we're going to take a little break and we'll see you very soon. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809.
Welcome back. Now Dominic Kerwin and Marion Waldron have formed a duet to record a lovely song called Two Story House. Of course Dominic has enjoyed huge success down the years and has performed all over the world. And it was always Marion's ambition to record a song with Dominic. Well recently we went along to meet them both. We have come to the place in our love Where faith must be stronger than fear For if true love is our destination Through every storm it must always be clear The surest way to get there from here is to walk on faith, trust in love, just keep on putting one foot down in front of the other, when the valley's so wide, we stumble in stride, everything inside wants to give up. The last couple of years have been completely diff difficult for the music industry in general. Um, but I, I, I got, st I got stuck into the studio and I decided I wasn't going to waste the time. So um, on the first part of the lockdown, I recorded an album, uh, Walk in Faith, and then just recently, just at the end of uh, 2021, I, I released my my most recent album, which is a, an album called A Letter to You. I tore my letter up, I couldn't even start To tell you what's really here in my heart There's only so much that words can say So I send you a piece of this beautiful day Oh, I want you to know that I took a rainbow And sent it off in a letter to you I took flowers in the spring, made a sweet little ring And sent it off I think every album brings me something new. Um, I, I, but no matter what happens, I've always got to go back to Noreen Bond as the song that opened my career. And, and, and um, to this day, there's very few shows I'll get away with without at least performing the song, you know. Um, it came at a time in my career where I'd just been accepted and lifted by the, the record company Ritz Records as it was then. Uh, I had won a talent competition. That was the song I had won it with. Uh, I went into the studio with it, they put it on the first album, you know, and many, many doors opened after that, really, Martin, you know, I, you know, I toured with Charlie Pride, I toured with Kenny Rogers, I've toured, toured with Don Williams, uh, Crystal Gale, all these people, but it all goes back to that first song and that opening, that door opening, and it, it has to be Noreen Bond, really. That laid you down, my no. Marion, over the years you've recorded quite a few songs and they've been really popular. They have. There's been a selection, Martin, that some people obviously like more than others. It's a, something for everybody. I think when I started off with the debut EP, it was a kind of, it was a, a real eclectic mix of varying genres of music and, and then I've stayed more into Irish country. And uh, yeah, there's been some really great songs like My Irish Mother and uh, My Irish Boy and just, you know, uh, When New York Was Irish. Those types of songs have really taken off and people have really enjoyed them. My Irish boy, look my way, smile a smile, make my day and dance with me, won't you dance with me? I've seen you once, so don't me twice, I want to dance with you all my life, all my life. Dance me polka, dance me real, thrill me, swing me, show me. I do get a lot of followers, uh, you know, in America and Canada and Australia. There's a lot of people that listen to the music. And then there's some countries, actually, that you're really surprised with in the likes of Singapore and 
India, in Germany, in France there's quite a lot of people like the music and I get a lot of support from that side. In Norway there's a, another club there, a big a country club that uh, likes my music, so which is great. To always keep it country, keep it country just like me. To always keep it country, keep it country just like me. You've also got a new tour coming up, a UK tour. Tell me about that. Well, the tour itself, I've a few things lined up for March. Uh, there's a few shows of, of the actual UK tour starts in March. Uh, but then I've got a, a three days in my hometown and running into St. Patrick's Day, which is something I've never done before, Martin. It's generally, I've been in the UK or, or America doing work in around St. Patrick's Day. But this year, I'm actually going to be in my hometown, Oma, and that's going to be the 15th, the 16th and the 17th at the Silver Birch Hotel with other acts as well. It's three days of entertainment. And then we come back in in April and right through the whole of May where I'll be touring throughout uh, the UK, England, Scotland, Wales. And we'll sing as loud as we can Of an island so green That can only be seen Through the eyes of an Irish man The show's called Through the Eyes of an Irish Man. I've got two uh, young entertainers with me who will be my guests. Uh, a young man that's actually based in Wigan at the moment, but he's from my part of the world. He's from Oma, a young lad by the name of Gary Quinn. And there's a young girl from Wexford coming to join us. Uh, she's, do, she's making a great name for herself. Her name is Stacey Breen, so Stacey's on the show as well. So introducing new acts as well. But no one marrying through the music industry, and it's very, very hard to cross paths with everybody and touring throughout the UK. And I'd known that uh, Marion was uh, Manchester based, although she's from a Mayo background, I believe, if I'm right in saying that. Yeah. And. Um, so I got contacted about it, we got talking. Um, I watched a couple of Marion's videos. Uh, there was a gap in the, to be able to do something. So yeah, I said, right, let's have a go with this. I grew up listening to him. I loved, I've always loved his music. Um, so it was, it was somebody I admired a lot. I love a good voice. Uh, there's certain singing voices that are just, uh, a singing voice, because there's lots of varying different singing voices, but it's just, the voice really. So um, yeah, I admired him immensely and finally we got to do uh, a couple of numbers together which was a great honour for me. But when Dominic and I started chatting, um, we went through actually quite a number of songs. We looked at which ones would suit our voices, uh, the combination and what type of song it was. So we went into the studio, we have gone and we've recorded two songs and um so it's a George Jones, Tammy Wynette song, uh, Two Story House. So and I, I do believe we've done a good version of it. I really, really do like it, you know, so I hope the audience like it as well.
seen before. wish Dominic and Marion the very best of luck with their new song and we hope you enjoy their video. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Don't forget we'll be back next Thursday evening at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, take good care.